A preferred strategy amongst many is to invest in companies which have an evolving business model and a long growth runway. In other words, most investors favor investing in mid-cap companies. Now, there are three ways of going about this. The first option is for one to research, that is do your own fundamental analysis, do your technical analysis if you understand it, and then invest. Secondly, one can engage the services of a fund manager and invest via an actively managed mid-cap mutual fund or a PMS. And option number three is the passive style of investing wherein one can invest via a mid-cap index fund. In this video, we shall focus more on the third option and examine the Nifty Mid-Cap 150 Index in greater details as we study its construct, the companies that make up the index, the sectoral composition, its valuation, and how the Mid-Cap 150 has performed against different indices. Let's begin. The Nifty Mid-Cap 150 Index, as the name suggests, consists of 150 companies. These companies are ranked between 101 and 250 in the Nifty 500 index and this ranking is based on the company's full market capitalization. So in the stacking order, we have those 50 Nifty 50 companies which are generally established industry leaders and represent around 56% of the Nifty 500's total market capitalization. Then comes in the Nifty Next 50 companies which are tomorrow's superstars. There are some small caps and somewhere in the middle are the mid-cap 150 companies which presently and prominently comprise of over 18% of Nifty 500's total market capitalization. Now these three capitalizations, that is large, mid and small, are not merely a size-based differentiation and there are some unique characteristics for each type. For instance, the average daily traded value in large caps is double of mid caps, which in turn is double of what is there for small caps. Additionally, about 60% of shareholding in mid cap companies are with their promoters, with only two fifths of it available as free float. We also examined the performance of all present mid cap 150 companies and discovered that the average constituent has been growing its revenue by 8.7% over these last five years while upping its EBITDA, EPS and stock price by 12 to 13%. Of course, the numbers relevant to individual companies may not be as significant to the index because a lot of it will depend on the weights assigned to different companies, which is something we'll discuss in the next section of this video. All right, so remember this, when it comes to the selection of companies for the Nifty Mid-Cap 150, the selection is done on the basis of the company's full market capitalization. However, when it comes to assigning weightages to each of these companies in the same index, it depends not on the full market capitalization, but it depends on their free float market cap. Now this might sound a bit confusing to you if you're hearing the word free float for the first time and if that's the case then I highly recommend that you watch the video that's up on the screen for more information on the same. But to illustrate the point, at the time of recording this video, the company with the highest weightage in the mid-cap 150 index is Adani Total Gas, which is then followed by Tata Power. These two companies together have a 5.5% weightage in the index. But what's interesting to note here are their full market capitalization and their free float numbers. You see, Adani Total Gas has a market capitalization of 2,60,000 crores, while Tata Power's MCAP is a much more sedate 78,000 crores. However, since Adani Total Gas has a much smaller 20% proportion of free float in its shareholding, and because Tata Power has a much higher 55% free float, the weightage distribution is a lot more compact as compared to the market capitalization of these individual stocks. This interplay between full market capitalization and the assigned weights is visible at many places in the index, but what was also pleasing to note was that the mid-cap 150 index is a lot more diversified than the Nifty 50 index. So unlike the Nifty 50 where the top seven stocks occupy 50% of the weightage, in the case of Midcap 150, the top seven companies contribute to only 13% of the index weightage. 
even from a sectoral perspective, we see that the Nifty Midcap 150 index is a lot more diversified as compared to the large cap peers, which means more industries and which also means more existing or potential industry leaders are filling up that space. Now, what's interesting in the sector makeup are the differences between the Midcap 150 index with the other indices. For instance, the large cap indices are heavily tilted towards a few sectors like financial services, information technology, oil and gas, and FMCGs, which contribute 70% of their sector-wise weight. On the other hand, these same four sectors contribute half, so just 33% of the weights for the mid-cap 150. In fact, the mid-cap 150 index has more of capital goods, healthcare, chemicals, and consumer durables, which in addition to financial services, IT, and oil and gas, makes this index a truly diversified one. Yet another interesting point to note is that the mid-cap index is a very moving index. And what I mean by that is that some companies which are doing well will move out of the index and go into the bigger nifty 100 index over time. And likewise, some of the poor performing ones will move into the small cap index. This way, there is a leaky bucket from both ends, which should really not bother an investor as long as he or she has a smartly distributed asset allocated portfolio. Now on this YouTube channel, we have talked quite a bit about asset allocation and rebalancing. But if you're looking for an automated and intelligent way of going about it, then do explore ET Money Genius, which point blank helps you make more returns, does it more consistently, and also does a fantastic job of protecting your portfolio's downside. For more information on Genius, do watch these videos which are available in English and Hindi, and the link of which is attached in this video's description. Like any equity-based investment, the Midcap 150 index has had periods of ups and downs, but nevertheless, the index has given excellent returns over the long run. In numbers, the Nifty Midcap 150 index has delivered average annual returns of 15.2% over the last 15 years, which when put into perspective means that if anyone had invested one rupee in this index on the 1st of April 2007, that one rupee would have grown to a little over eight rupees. Interestingly, an examination of the index's trailing performance shows a very consistent pattern with returns lingering around the 15% mark across many periods. When we examine performance even on a five-year rolling return basis, which by the way is a wonderful way of examining mutual fund performance, we see the median returns of 14.9% for the Nifty Midcap 150. This effectively means 50%, that is half of the time, the Midcap 150 index has delivered a return of 15% or more over a five-year stretch. Now, investors like you and me don't invest a lot on the lump sum mode. In fact, we prefer to do it the SIP way, and hence it was important for us to examine performance on a staggered basis as well. Here too, we see some impressive gains for this index over the last 15 years, with the SIP mode doing even better than the lump sum purchase of the Midcap 150 index. Okay, now that we have examined the index in isolation, let's do some comparisons. The first comparison is with the popular large and small cap indices and on a performance basis, the mid cap 150 has been the highest performer and the more consistent index over these last 15 years. In fact, on an annual basis, the mid cap 150 has outperformed the Nifty 50 and the Nifty 100 index in 11 of the last 15 years. Additionally, and I think I had highlighted this in a previous video. Historically, the mid-cap 150 has done far better than even the small-cap 250 index, although popular opinion is that the small-cap index should do better on account of assumed risks. Unfortunately, or rather fortunately for the smart investor, risk and return almost never move in a linear fashion, and this difference in mid-cap and small-cap performance is proof of that. The second comparison I want to talk about is on how the Midcap 150 index has performed in comparison to actively managed Midcap funds. Now we have already established that the Nifty Midcap 150 TRI has generated returns of a little over 15% in these last 15 years. 
this number does not include an expense ratio and since we don't have a long performing mid cap index fund we'll take a call on this and set up a charge of 0.5 percent in our estimates towards expenses so here's how the actively managed mid cap category compares with a corresponding self-adjusted mid cap 150 tri index fund Notice here that the performance of the average mid cap fund is somewhat similar to the mid cap index fund over many years. In fact, the index variant even goes on to trump its active peers over a five year trailing period. Of course, there will be some mid cap funds which will do extremely well in some years and consistency will be the key here. But given the fact that picking the right superstar mid cap fund is not easy, we might want to take the index variant a bit more seriously. As a matter of fact, a smart thing to do here is to look at your portfolio as a combination of index funds which can be implemented by you or you can also explore ET Money's genius offerings. Those details can be found on our mobile app. And finally, let's have a quick word on valuation because in investing, everything comes down to the price one piece. Over time, we've seen mid caps being priced obscenely high or unnervingly low, which I'm sure anyone who has spent the last five years on investing in Indian equities has seen a lot of, especially with mid caps. Now with regards to the mid cap 150 index, the long term average P ratio has been around the 30 mark, which is where the index is at currently which effectively means that the index is neither overpriced nor is it underpriced if the historical P ratio were to be believed. This also means that presently, an investor's assessment of investing in mid caps has to be more hinged on its growth story rather than its cheapness. Now the simplest way to invest in the Nifty mid cap 150 index is to choose an index fund or ETF that tracks this index. On the ET Money app, you'll find quite a few options with related schemes from Aditya Birla Sun Life, ICIC Prudential, Motila Roswal, and Nippon India. The direct plan expense ratios of these funds are presently within a tight range of 0.2% to 0.27%, and there aren't any glaring differences in their performance as well. So let's recap why one should invest in mid caps using a passive investing vehicle like the Nifty mid cap 150 index fund. Firstly, one gets their capital allocated to 150 companies that exhibit moderate to high growth and have the potential to emerge as industry leaders. Secondly, one gets better diversification in terms of companies and sectors which improves portfolio stability. Number three, the mid cap 150 index has proven its performance over the last 15 years and has delivered far higher returns when compared to the Nifty 50, the Nifty 100 and the Nifty small cap 250 index. And point four emphasizes the fact that approaching mid cap investing via an index fund or via an ETF is not only cost effective, but it is also more systematic, it is more transparent and it's passive investing, which is where a lot of investor money is being directed to. In fact, if you're keen to do some homework, you might also want to look at a couple of variations in the form of the Axis Nifty Midcap 50 Index, which picks the top 50 companies from the Midcap 150. And you can also look at DSP's Nifty Midcap 150 Quality 50 Fund, which applies some additional rules on top of the Midcap 150 Index to select 50 companies based on its smart beta fund strategy. So feel free to do what you want, but do give mid caps your due consideration. And with this, we come to the end of this video. I hope you learned something new today. Please do tap on that like button, subscribe to our channel, leave a comment, and I look forward to catching up with you next week on another insightful video. Until then. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme-related documents carefully.